In this video we'll explain 15 things that you should do to your motorhome when it hasn't been used for a long time. That's 15 things that will keep it in tip-top condition and stop it from seizing, giving you peace of mind when you go on your next trip. If you have easy access to your motorhome, then you can follow these tips on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. If you don't, you should carry them out before your first trip, say, after the lockdown has ended. We currently don't have access to our motorhome, so I've asked mechanic Chaz to explain using his. Over to you, Chaz. Hi everyone, Chaz here from uh, Ads and Zoe's Home and Hits the Road. I'm gonna go through a few things on your motorhome in lockdown if it's been sitting there a while, or it's on your driver when you first go to it after the lockdown's up. Um, so let's go through a few pointers and see if we can make things a bit easier for you. Some people, which is a good idea, they'll get a peg or a cloth and they'll keep their wiper blade off of the windscreen. So you put the peg across there and it holds the wiper blade up like so, off the windscreen. Um, but what you want to do before you get in and you operate your washers and your wipers to check them, is just move and lift your wiper off of the windscreen like so. I don't know if any of you come out in a frosty morning and put the wipers on oh, and rip the blades off of them. That can happen, you know, when it's been sitting a while. Trees, sap, can happen. Washer jets. Little pin. Keep them clean. Little pin, you look at the jet, the little hunt, keep them clean with a little pin. That way, if you keep them clean with a pin, or you can buy jet washer cleaners actually, what what happen then is, when you come to, if it can been sitting for much months and they do get blocked, you pull your pump, there's a blockage, the pump's still pumping, and you can damage a jet, or you can inflate a joint and pop it, or a hose and pop it. So, and you can even damage the pump, back feed the pump. I've, I've only seen that a couple of times, but if you keep them clean, use your washers, put it on the windscreen, you'll know that after a few months you can't fit, going down the road, you're not going to pull the, the, the arm and you know get no water come out of this plug. So, our vehicle's been sitting a while, and um, we haven't done the bonnet. So what you want to do on the regular interval while you're sitting there, if you, if you can get to it, is gently work your bonnet cable, and that makes the cable move inside the sheath. Okay, just like that, because if it sits there for ages, you can see that you do that, you break the plastic lever or you snap the cable. You're in a world of pain then. Also, when you've when you, you've activated the bonnet, come to the front, lift your bonnet up. Find your, your catch and lift your bonnet up and down just to work the hinges and work the catch as well. Take the stay out, make sure the stay works. Anything that's mechanical will move, yeah, keep it free. It may, this may seem excessive, but believe me, I've been to vehicles that have been sitting in the yard for six months, two months, and pop, you break the cable. So, bonnet up, what you want to do while you've got your bonnet up is check your levels. Check your washer fluid level, check your coolant level, check your brake fluid level. You may have sprung a leak while it's been sitting here. And, and check your oil level with your dipstick. So go through, check all your levels. Um, that way you know that when you go to start it, everything is okay, all the levels are where they should be and you've got the right lubrication when you need it, basically. Another good point is, if you've been sitting, you might have been sitting for months, or even your camera has been sitting for a while, um, Unplug your lead on the power side. So this end is dead, it goes into your van. And check your lead and go through your whole lead and check it for cracks, splits, tears, make sure it's quite malleable. You know, and go right way through it, but make sure you unplug it first, because the last thing you want is 240 volts going up your arm. If there's any amps in it, it'll hurt. And then uh, check your pins, check the holes are clear. Another one, your tires. You can sit in a while. Get a gauge, check your tyre pressures, and also, you shouldn't have to worry too much about the tread depth, because that should be the same as when you left it. But, take your hands, a pair of gloves, just gently run your hands around the tyre on the outside like so. Like that. And you're, what you're feeling for is any lumps, bumps or bulges, and do the same at the back. Nice and slowly and carefully, all the way round. Then have a visual look and make sure you can't see anything that's like, you know, like a bulge or a bump or a split or anything like that. Do that on all four wheels and then when you move the vehicle backwards and forwards, keep them turning, move it forward 
108 degrees, check it, move it back 100 degrees, check it, then you're getting the part of the tyre that's covered on each wheel. Also, make sure you check your tyre pressures and keep them inflate, inflated to the, the correct pressure, you'll find it in your manual, as you know. If your motorhome's been sitting for a while, um, you might want to just work the accelerator pedal up and down with your hand or your foot just to make sure it's free and it springs back up again in case it's sticking and you go to start it up and if throttle sticks to the floor and it just over revs. Pump your clutch up and down, make sure it springs back up and down again. And it might be a good idea is when you first start your engine up to hold your clutch down when you turn the key. Quick one from me Chaz, if you don't mind. Keep the batteries charged by using solar, starting the engine or using an electric hookup. However, you shouldn't keep your motorhome plugged into an electric hookup for long periods of time because some older motorhomes, including our 20 year old Hymer, don't have intelligent or smart chargers. Some chargers will constantly charge your batteries which will shorten the battery life. Once the engine starter battery is charged, start the engine and move the motorhome to rotate the wheels to avoid flat spots on the tyres. Back to you Chaz. Another point is, um, if your hand brake's been on for a while, put your foot on your foot brake, pull your hand brake up slightly, put the button in, and hold the button in, just work it up and down like that. If you hold the button in, it won't activate the ratchet. Up and down a few times, then let it up, let it down, and then pull it up to listen to the ratchet. Perfect. Now when your motorhome's been sitting a while, um, everything on it, um, well it doesn't move does it? So it stays static. So what might be an idea is just to start your vehicle up and then turn your steering from lock to lock like so. Right way round and back the other way. While you're working the power steering pump, all the ball joints, all the steering joints, anything that turns when the steering turns you're moving from side to side and you'll keep it free and moving. The last thing you want to do is, after God knows how long the convenience is, to start it, I've got to pull away and the steering's locked or tight. So then what we've done is we've put our steering from side to side. Now if you're an automatic, what you want to do is put it into drive with your foot on the brake as you know, and just take your foot to brake. Sorry, as you were, uh, let your hand brake off and then let her roll forward a bit. Then into reverse, and let her come back again. Just to make sure that the wheels are turning and it is going out of drive. Now I hope that was helpful to you and useful to you. You know, I'm not trying to teach anyone to suck eggs, but with all this going on, I mean, we can forget things. And as we all know, the motorhome is one of the most important things in our lives because we all work hard for them and um, we all love them. That's why we do it. Um, just a little collaboration between us and the CFSA to uh, try and help you out really. All stay safe and hope to see you all soon. Cheers, YouTube. In this video we'll explain 15 things you should do to your motorhome when it hasn't been used for a long time. 15 things that will keep it in tip-top condition and, sh and stop it from seizing. Over to you, Chaz. Cheers. Thanks. No cycling. In this video, we'll explain 15th you. Beauty. Thanks for watching our video. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed or leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe for more video updates or maybe even watch one of our previous videos. Bye bye now.